A miracle is something that goes against what is natural or against the norm. And there is no explanation for what has happened other than it is the power of God when we talk about a miracle. A lot of times people use that word loosely. Oh, that was a miracle. Well, everything is not a miracle. Miracles are supernatural. A miracle cannot be explained like the miracles that Jesus worked. You cannot explain a miracle. Actually, miracles are rare. And a lot of times what we call a miracle is not really a miracle at all. It's not. Uh, God might move in this situation or in that situation, but uh, be careful what you call a miracle. If miracles were regular, they wouldn't be miracles. <laughs> they would be regular. That happen all the time, which you could explain. So everything is not a miracle. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11, the scripture I was going to get to last week and I didn't get there, but we'll look at it today. Acts chapter 19, verse 11, it says, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul that even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick and diseased. Diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. So he's got handkerchiefs, he's got these claws. He was a tent maker and some commentators said that these were claws from his, his, the tents that he would make, <clears throat> that he would put on, had on his body and they were taken and put on the sick people. And these claws, uh, when they were put on the people, healing would come. Now some people think we're supposed to do that too. <laughs> Just because Paul did that, or God wrought miracles through Paul doing that, that doesn't mean we're supposed to do that. Amen. It doesn't mean that that's going to happen. Right. It can happen, right. but <laughs> that's up to God. Amen. That's not something that we, you know, go get a bunch of handkerchiefs and aprons and cloths and towels and putting them on us or wiping our hands or our face or uh, whatever and go and laying them on somebody, thinking that's going to heal them or deliver them. Because some people are putting faith in objects other than in God. Well-known prophet is selling a lot of prayer shawls. Hope y'all ain't got one. <laughs> but people buying them by the, by the Lord. Press y'all. Because she's prayed over them. She's laid on these prayer shawls and all of this other stuff. And they're supposed to be full of power. And when you get one, expect a miracle. And you're supposed to wear it and put it on and pray in it and all this stuff. <laughs> Don't fall for gimmicks and tricks. Amen. And you don't see that nowhere in the Bible where folk were doing that. But they're doing all kinds of stuff these days. Can't we just stick with the Word of God? Amen. 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 God wrought these miracles through Paul. But that was for Paul. And that's what we call some miracle working power right there. Yes. Where the handkerchiefs, the aprons, 
placed on people and they were delivered. The word miracle is from the Greek word dunamis, translated power. Another word is wonder. When God does a miracle, it's a wonder. God does wonders. You, you can't figure it out. It, it blows your mind. It, 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 it takes you for a loop. Uh, wow! You're in awe. Because God is awesome like that. Amen. Now, I have to talk about this because we live in a day when people run to crusades. They run to conferences looking for a miracle or to be healed by some trickster slickster who masquerades as a divine healer and you have to sow a seed in order to be healed. And it's funny how, how no one ever gets healed. When Jesus healed, when the disciples, God worked through them to heal, they didn't charge nobody. They weren't running around everywhere talking about some sow a seed. Sow a seed and you're going to get your breakthrough. Sow a seed and you're going to be here. So you got, you got to plant something in the ground. And you don't see that nowhere in the Bible. God just healed. Amen. People needed healing. They needed deliverance. And by the grace of God, he granted that deliverance. And he granted that healing. No tricks. No theatrics. No African devil in magic. It's just the sovereignty and the power of God at work. Amen. The false prophets and false teachers lie to people promising them that God is, has healed them as they go back home. I've seen and heard some of this at these crusades. Weeks go by. Months go by. Sometimes years go by. And these folk are still sick. The promise of false breakthrough. That's the day we live in. This is one preacher. I'm not going to promise you nothing that God didn't promise you. Amen. Amen. Ain't no makeup stuff. If it ain't in here, you ain't getting it. But the promises that accrue to you are for you. And the Bible tells us do not go beyond the scripture. Don't, don't, don't teach beyond that. Don't, don't say what it's not saying. We ought to stick with what it's saying. So even though we don't see miracles and healings on the same scale as in the Bible, miracles and healings do still happen. They happen. But no one did the miracles that Jesus did when he was on the earth. No one. And some of these self-proclaimed prophets and apostles are claiming to be on the same level as Jesus and the 12 apostles. But that's a lie. They're not on the same level as them. Because you never hear them working the miracles that Jesus worked or the apostles. Now a lot of them make false claims, but those claims cannot be validated. They cannot be confirmed. If people were doing miracles, come here, oh, just miracles are just happening, happening, happening. How come that's not on TV? 
TV. If miracles were happening like that, man, they, they have to be publicizing it. Oh, that's going to be a big deal. They emptied out the hospital over there in Arkansas. That's going to make the news. It was a whole slew of people on the street, sick, lame, limbs missing. And wow, we got it on camera. Where is it? So a lot of this stuff is false out there to deceive people and lead them astray. Peter pop off. I hope nobody's ordered the miracle spring water. Shame on you. You fell for that. A five-year-old got more sense than that. Or the miracle spring water today. Get in and it's going to bless you. Put it in your wallet, under your pillow. Uh, uh, miracle money is coming to you. You liar. You deceiver. And people pack these places out by the hundreds, by the thousands. And it makes you wonder, what in the world? You know he's fake. And yet, still, you got to buy a ticket. You'll stand in line for five hours to get in that building. They show these things on TV. Standing in line, know this man is fake. He's been proven fake and a phony back in the 80s. Busted. Yet still. Pack the house out. Because people want to see the spectacular. And this is why we are warned over and over to not fall for stuff through the Bible. Jesus was talking about false prophets would arise and false Christs. The apostles and the epistles talked about false teachers constantly and false prophets. In the Old Testament, you see false prophets Galore in how God warned against false prophets. But in one place, God's talking about, you know, they fall. How, how the, the people, but the people love it. God says. And they love it. And that's the truth. They love it. And we live in that day where you see them. Um, coming out of the woodwork because they know people are hungry for something false. Why? Because the Bible describes the day that we live in. Itchy ears. Scratch my ears. Say it all the time. They, they, they got the Shaka Khan disease. Rufus Shaka Khan. Tell me something good down and out. Tell me that you like it. Yeah. They, they, they love it. Make me feel good. Stroke my fur. Itching ears. And they will heap to themselves teachers that tell them what they want to hear. Don't, don't tell me there's nothing that I don't want to hear now. Don't, 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 don't bring the word while I'm living wickedly. No, 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 I ain't got time for that one. I, I, I don't want that word convicting me and making me feel bad. Don't, don't tell me about my sin. Don't expose me with the word. Don't touch me in that place. Uh, you're not supposed to know about that. That's my secret. Uh, don't meddle with me. That's the age we live in. Let me tell you something. If I'm lost and on my way to hell, 
and I'm living bad, not living from God, for God, living apart from God, out of fellowship, no relationship whatsoever, living my own life, doing my own thing. Tell me the truth. If my eternal destiny is in jeopardy because of the way I'm living and I'm living apart from Christ, don't sell me a bill of goods. Don't take me for a ride. No, 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 don't, don't, don't shuck and jive around. Get to the point. And even though it might not feel good, and even though it may stab me, because the word will do that, yeah. it's supposed to. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Like a two-edged sword, scripture says in Hebrews. It's going to cut you. But it's cutting you to heal you. Not cutting you to kill you. Not there. No spiritual healing. Now I'll take the physical healing in the red hot minute. Yeah, heal that sickness on me. But spiritual, uh, I'll pass on that one. Just make me feel better. That's the age we live in. Amen. We live there, y'all. I remember back in the 90s, thank God that you eventually grow. Amen. Don't look at me like y'all haven't grown. Maybe you have. You're supposed to grow as time goes by. Amen. You should be in the same space you were 10 years ago. Yeah. Spiritually, 20 years ago. God forbid, 30 years ago. It was back in the 90s when I first received the call, preach, seeking God. I was hungry for God. I was on fire for God. Had been running for a while. Finally, God stopped me in my tracks. I was like Jonah on the run. But he got my attention because I was in the belly of the whale. But when I got out of there, just like Jonah, I hit the road running. You couldn't stop me. You couldn't block me. But a lot of times, when people first get that fire, mm -hmm. and they first get the going for God, that they're so hungry that they will grab onto anything. Yes, that's true. <laughs> don't feed off of anything. Amen. They don't know any better. Right. They just hunger for God. Right. And it's easy, easy to be led astray or to get off track. Amen. Until you start growing. Right. And, and until your eyes start opening. Right. My wife and I, we went to some crusades back in the 90s. And uh, we got caught up in there. I mean, we got caught up in that crusade thing. You know, remember back then there was some holy laughter going on and all it had, all kinds of craziness. Uh, uh, meetings where people were just, the whole church, people just, I know, just laughing. Laughing out of control. And blaming, and blaming it on the Holy Spirit. Right, right. And they, they tagged it, holy laughter. Yeah. 
holy laughter. You like. No such thing. <laughs> but people was grabbing on to it. Oh, I got holy laughter last night. Ooh, it was wonderful. <laughs> Just falling for any and everything that people come up with. Preacher walk out in the audience and wave his hand and the whole five rows fall on the ground laughing. <laughs> help me find that, y'all. Help me, help me find that. Make up stuff and people fall for it. But thank God for his truth. Amen. Thank him for growth. Amen. And when when do you hungry for truth? See, that's the thing. And when you want truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, God will get it to you. He'll get it to you. And you'll get a tip from it. And you will grow. You won't be running to and fro from one end of the country to the other end. You in New York at this. You in Las Vegas at that. You up there in Milwaukee at that. You down in New Orleans at another. Just all over the place, falling for all kinds of stuff. Beware of what's going on in this last day. Amen. 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 Because a lot of the stuff that they call miracles, you're hearing a lot about that out in California now. They're really not miracles. And not only that, but you know the devil can do some stuff? Satan has power. And can deceive people. There will be preachers standing before God giving their resume out. Cast out devils in your name, I did this in your name, I did that in your, your name. And, and that's why you got to be careful. You must have some discernment. Amen. We'll see that later. Another day. Discernment. You must be able to discern When you're growing, you're discerning. And you can't be easily led astray or tricked just because it sounds or looks spiritual doesn't mean that it is. Here's a God. But we know that there's this new thing out and everybody's talking about it. All the rappers and all the Actors and all the other, you know, people out there in the celebrity world talk about their spiritual. Spiritual don't mean saved. No. Spiritual doesn't mean you're born again or you know God. You can be spiritual and demon possessed. Amen. Because the devil is spiritual. He's a spirit. And a lot of people claim, oh, I'm spiritual. Uh, oh, that ain't saying nothing. That ain't saying nothing. Right. How about, I know Jesus. I've been born again. Amen. I'm saved. Amen. See, that's that worldly talk. Oh, I'm, I'm spiritual. Oh, my whole family's spiritual. <laughs> oh, we, we spirit. oh, I'm spiritual. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Shake and move and jerk and all you want. You're not saved. <laughs> Tell me you know Jesus. Because if you ain't talking Jesus, you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> well, I'm a Buddhist, I'm spiritual. You ain't saying nothing. Well, I'm a Muslim, I'm spiritual, you ain't saying nothing. 
You're only saying something when you're saying the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. The only name that brings salvation. The only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus, that name. Something about that name. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, you know that name. That name where demons tremble at the sound of that name. They know who he is. Yes, they know. And tremble, the Bible says. Hallelujah. A miracle defies logic. It's beyond our grasp and it's beyond our understanding. Some of the miracles that Jesus did were to prove that he was no ordinary man. And some of his miracles were not duplicated. Why? Because he's God. Who but Jesus can turn water into wine? Any? No. 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 You can't raise your hand on that one. Not only did he turn water into wine, but he turned it into the best kind of wine. It was the choice wine. It was the good wine. That's what the host said. You can save the best for last. <laughs> no cheap wine. John chapter 2. It was the best. Who but Jesus can command the wind and the sea, nature itself, and it obeys him. It obeys now. The wind shuts its mouth and the sea sits down and be still. That's right. He can do that because he's God. Look at Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 quickly. Mark chapter 5. And verse see, verse 39, 39, verse 39, where I'm going. No, turn back. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And verse 30. I want to look at this. Well, I'll skip to verse 35. I don't want to read all those verses. Verse 35, on the same day when the evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little birth boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. So the boat was getting filled up in this storm. But he was in the stern. What was he doing? Asleep on the pillow. He wasn't worried about the storm. Jesus then grabbed him a pillow, laid down, and took a nap. In the middle of a storm. Because he knows that the storm is not going to overtake him while he's in the boat. He wasn't panicking, but he was panicking. He don't panic, but we sure do. Amen. And they awoke him, said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Don't you know we're about to die? See? Perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. Shut up! 
and said to the sea, Peace be still. Sit down. Amen. Now, who could God to do that? Amen. Have you ever done it? <laughs> Peace be still, and guess what? And the wind ceased. It shut up. And there was a great calm. Guess what? The waves died down. They wasn't roaring no more. Why? Because the Creator just spoke. <laughs> The one who created them. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? See, they got him in the boat and they scared. This is why we, we have no need to fear of anything. Amen. Well, we got you. You ought not be fearing anything. I don't care what comes against you. Doesn't matter what you're facing. I can't fear because Jesus is in the boat with me. He's right by my side. And sometimes it may feel like he's asleep. Because your life is rocking and reeling. Topsy-turvy. Going all over the place. And you're wondering, where is Jesus at? He's laying right there on the boat. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. He's, right, he's right there. But sometimes you gotta wake him up. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what I mean by that? Call him. Jesus! Jesus! Lord, save me! Lord, I need you! right now. Lord, deliver me. Rescue me. You got to open up your mouth and cry out. Sometimes you got to cry out. He said, call unto me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. you gotta, sometimes you got to call him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Notice, they didn't have any faith. Because he, in another place, he tells them, if you just got the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. <laughs> mustard seed faith. It's mountain moving faith. Come on, man. <laughs> you had a mountain. Do you have some faith? Look at verse 41. And they feared, after, they, after this happened, and they feared exceedingly. Exceedingly means they were like this. And said to one another, they talk to each other, the disciples, all of them, well, I'm going to go. Who can this be? See, they thought they knew him. And they've been walking with him for a while. And, and see, that's how some Christians are. You're walking with him, you're, you're talking with him, and you, 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 you're in the vicinity, but oh, you don't really know him. Like you can know him. Who can this be? They get a revelation now. We know what he's been saying and what he's been teaching, but after this, see, there's some stuff that God can do. And then after that, you see him in a whole different light now. Oh, he can show me something. And you can't change my mind about who he is. 
You can't bring me no junk. Because I know who Jesus is. I know what he's able to do. And he can do the impossible. Hallelujah. Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? That the elements, nature, does what he says. Isn't that so? I was thinking about that and I'm thinking, wow. Isn't that so? Creation and nature willingly obeys him. And, 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 and boom! But people people got a problem. Isn't it amazing how you get nature to obey him but can't get people to obey him? They just do it. They don't question. They don't doubt. They don't think about it. Peace be still. <laughs> Wasn't the wind just blowing us out of the boat? Yeah, but Jesus just spoke. We ain't moving. But we know who he is. Yes. Yes. Sometimes people don't obey because they don't know who he is. They really don't know. Because if you really knew who he was, woo, you pay homage, you bow down before his presence. You be willing to obey him. This all-powerful God, creator of the universe, and everything that you see, hear, touch, smell, the creator, we would obey him. Amen. People are the only part of creation that he can't seem to get to obey. Like they ought to. Oh, think about it. I know you got to agree with that. You got to agree with it. Just think about your own self. You got to agree with that. Even if you say you got to say you right. You right. You right. Because he told me to, to forgive, but you right. I just ain't done it yet. I'm working on that. I know I need to. But, I know I need to shut up and get out of this attitude and get rid of this anger because I'm, I'm angry but I'm sinning too. I, I'm not obeying to be angry and sin not. I'm going to be angry and then I'm going to sin. Bitterness, unforgiveness. We know the scriptures. Living holy. Yet still, I got my sacred cow. And I, I can't let quite let go of this. This turns me on. Quiet now. I need a penny to drop right about now. Clang real loud. God understands. Stop saying that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's no excuse to remain the way you are. Amen. God will never understand why we why we continue to live in sin. You get no understanding there. Amen. Thank him for his mercy and his grace, though. Amen. Because you woke up this morning. And while he was touching finger, people with his finger of love, 
to tell the truth, you should have been skipped. You should have been skipped. Amen. I should have been skipped. And I shouldn't feel that bad if I put me in there. <laughs> he said, well, I shouldn't have woke up this morning. Okay, I, I shouldn't have woke up this morning. <laughs> but that's how good he is. Amen. That's just how good he is. Amen. You woke up and didn't pray. Close the book right now, now. It's, it's time to close now. He done found me. He was doing good until he went there. I showed him praise this morning. See, the, the little thing. Food on the table. You got a job. You got money. You got a car. You got, the list goes on and on. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and you will see what the Lord has done. We don't deserve it, but we don't. We don't deserve it, Sister Pat, we don't, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, Shelly, we don't deserve it, Jenny, we don't. Sister Burke, we don't. Minister, we don't. When you think about it, we don't. But thank God for his goodness. And his grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he's able to command the elements. And they obey. And then he walks on water also. He's able to walk on water. Not only does he speak to the storm, but he's able to walk on the storm. But he, see, Jesus, there's nobody like him. Nobody like him. In Matthew chapter 14, he walked on water. Amen. Amen. In fact, let's just turn that quickly. I've I'm, got to close. And I still didn't get anywhere. <laughs> Matthew 14. Chapter 14. Look at verse 25. We could read at 22, but I'll, I'll just skip some of that. Well, I'll, uh, verse 24. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. This is where Jesus made his disciples get into the, a boat. Notice, he made them get in it. And he knew that they were headed for a storm. But he made them get in it because he knew what he was going to do. Amen. 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 But the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Tossed by the waves for the wind was contrary. Now this is in some of the other gospels. And they got in the boat around it was evening, it was probably around 6, 7 o'clock in the evening when they got in the boat and got, in, got on the water. Well, the other gospels talk about it was around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning now. So they've been in this for a minute. <laughs> sometimes you can, you'll be in something for a minute. Amen. <laughs> and it says that he was standing on the land looking at him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see the struggle and I see, I see, I see, I see what's going on. I see you in trouble. I see. 
But Jesus doesn't ever panic over anything. Because he's God. Let me submit to you right now. Everybody in here has problems. Amen. Don't think you're by yourself, because you're not. And my point is, everybody has problems except for Jesus. <laughs> think about that. Jesus never has a problem. God doesn't have problems. We do. That's why he's able to stand back and just watch them struggle. Being tossed all over the place. And he's watching. And they've been in that for, for hours now. It's the wee hours of the morning now. And they go and they're in the middle of the lake. They, they couldn't get it up the side because of the storm. Keeping them in the same place. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, four o'clock in the morning, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. He knows when to come to your rescue. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to go with the old cliche. He may not come in you. The Lord Jesus. When you want him, but he ain't come at four in the morning. He's right on time. Because that's his time to do a miracle. You're not going to rush no miracle. You're not going to make him do something before the time. Because there's always a purpose tied to the weight. I've learned that over all these years. Uh, I, he made me wait because, see, on the other side, I see it now. But when you're in the middle of a storm, you, you, you don't quite see things clearly because you've got the waves and the water and the wind flashing and, 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 and the water in your eyes and it's obscure out there in the middle of the sea and you can't quite see the way things really are. So you, you don't get it. But when the storm is over, woo-wee, I, 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 I got to go here, and I got to finish. He said, how can maybe I can finish on this note? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Get it? After the storm, after that rain been done now, now you see, that's what he was doing. That's what the Lord was up to. Wow! I didn't see it coming, but in this time, he comes walking on the water. I may as well finish. Verse 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Notice, what was to be their help, they saw it as a ghost. What was on its way to make things better, they thought it was getting worse. We on the sea, in the middle of the storm, in a boat. It's bad now, but here comes a ghost. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Is something else going wrong? Ain't the storm enough? Here comes a ghost. And they scared as they can be. Because... Hey, come on now, this is a ghost. 
The Greek word is phantom. You heard of the phantom of the opera? Spook. It's a, it's a phantom on the water. Let's show you a ghost and see how you going to act. <laughs> well, wake up tonight and go get a drink of water. <laughs> and standing before you is this white figurine. <laughs> Guess who's going to lose all control of the faculties and get jump under the bed. You didn't miss the, the mattress and the sheets. You went under. <laughs> what they thought was going to kill them was actually coming to save them. Because it wasn't a ghost, it was Jesus walking on the water. Right. It was Jesus coming to the rescue. Yes. Amen. 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 And sometimes when we think it's getting worse, it's actually turning to get better. Amen. It's always dark before the dawn. You know the saying. The darkest time is at midnight. But you better believe that the dawn, the breaking of day is about to happen. The sun coming up in the morning. It's always come up, and it's going to come up again. Come on. They cried out for fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. Yeah. What? Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, you're not God. But guess what? His faith is in God. Amen. Amen. But the greater point is, is that Jesus said, come on. If he says, come on, yeah. hey, ain't nothing impossible now. Yeah. Oh, I can walk on water because he says, come on. Yeah. I can walk on top of the storm because he said, come on out here. But in verse 30, he runs into a problem because he's it says, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. He's looking at Jesus, and he does what Jesus says at his command, and he's doing the impossible. No man has walked on water since then. Not an ordinary man. It happened one time, never again. But he starts singing. When he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. So he got scared. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. There it is. See, if, if, if you're sinking today, cry out. Amen. If you're just going down for the third time, it's not time, high time to cry out. Tried everything else. Now it's time to cry out to Jesus. Amen. Don't be ashamed to cry out. I need to stop. Don't be too proud. I ain't gonna cry. Let me tell you something. Something will make you cry. Yeah. Something can happen to you that will make you cry out. Sooner or later. Let's not let it be. That you get to that point. Just cry out voluntarily. Lord, I need you right now. I'm not going to wait till this gets worse. 
It's bad enough. And it ain't getting no better. I've been spinning my wheels. It's time for me to cry. Right here, right now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If you do that, you'll save you. Because yeah. verse 31 says, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Yeah. See, he'll, he'll catch you when you're going down. He'll pick you up when you're going down. Yeah. And he said to him, Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? See, because when you got Jesus, you don't have to doubt. There's no reason to doubt. He has power over everything. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. The storm died down. When Jesus stepped in the boat, he wasn't in there at first. <laughs> See, if you don't have him in your boat, get him in there. The boat is for life. Be not in your life. Get him in your life. And you know if he's in your life or not. Don't deceive yourself. I got the Lord in my life. Uh -uh. No, you don't. Let's be truthful. Amen. Amen. Be honest with yourself. Look at your life. Look at your commitment or lack of commitment. Transformation has not truly taken place. And you got to be able to admit that and confess it. Let me get to verse 32. I, I went back. Verse 32. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. They admit it now. Why are they saying that? Because nobody can do that but God. Amen. Nobody can do that but God. Amen. Nobody works miracles like Jesus can. He is a miracle-working God. Amen. 